Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Leanne Anderson, Registered Dietitian Nutritionist and Certified Diabetes Educator. And today we have a special guest, um, one that you all know very well is Mr. Tim Scallon. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Leanne. It's a pleasure to be back. Well, we're excited to have you here. And as most of you know, Tim has hosted Memorial Cooking Innovations for the last eight years, and he recently decided to um, give the show up and spend more time in his own kitchen. So Tim, what's been going on in your kitchen? Well, we've of course been through the holidays, so there was a lot of uh, dressing and turkey and gravy, and of course Poodle Babette really enjoyed that part. Oh, I bet. She was also very good at doing the pre-wash, you know, before things went in the dishwasher. I still had to put them in the dishwasher, but uh, Babette enjoyed the holidays. Oh, How I about bet. you? You've been doing some cooking? I'm pretty much the same. Uh, at this time of year, I like to make casseroles and mm -hmm. do a little holiday baking, and of mm -hmm. course, just enjoying friends and family. Yeah. So now that we've got the holidays behind us, the eating season is behind us, we can get back into that healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. So okay. one of the reasons we had you come back was to go back over the previous year and some of the healthy lifestyle recipes and tips you shared. And what were some of your favorites? Well, let me think. Favorite shows. Okay. Well, you know, a fun show, Leanne, that we did was when Mr. Jan Viet, who is originally from the Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, came on and he showed us how to do a uh, Louisiana gumbo using traditional Louisiana methods. So you had a Dutchman making Louisiana gumbo, is that right? Can you believe that? Well, I think, Tim, we have, a, we have some fed rendered there. Okay. So I will, I will take that off. All right. I know all of our uh, viewers, because I, I hear from you all the time, and I really appreciate you talking to me and telling me you watch the show. It's always a pleasure and a, and a very nice compliment. Uh, but now I'm going to hear everybody talking about uh, using bacon on Memorial Cooking Innovations. This may be a first. <laughs> okay, well, so, so now what are you going to do? I'm going to uh, stop browning the meat a little bit. All right. So you're going to add the chicken. And, and so I noticed, Jan, that you left this chicken, uh, you didn't dice it up. So tell me about that. Yeah, I didn't dice it up. Um, it's it's going to probably fall apart a little bit while we put it in the gumbo yes. down the road. Yes. Um, also, the browning is a little bit better. I already kind of pick cooked this a little bit for the show. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is like the chicken that you made your stock from. Right, right, okay. and um, you know, you see some white meat. Yeah. Uh, many people will say that the flavor also comes from the dark meat. Well, actually, there's there's some science behind that. You know, dark meat, it's kind of splitting hairs because overall chicken is lean, but the dark meat has more fat than the, the white meat, and uh, the fat is where the flavor is. In fact, in on, on Memorial Cooking Innovations, you hear us say a lot of times the flavor is in the freshness. Well, when we're pulling out or, or omitting certain fats, one of the ways that we add flavor back in is with fresh ingredients, fresh herbs, uh, and so uh, 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 vegetable broth, you know, instead of water. So these are techniques that we use to adjust the flavor. In this case, you're using the real stuff. Yeah, and... Um Okay, now, I just wanted to say one more thing about that. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, if you wanted to make this dish more healthy, it, this is going to taste great, okay? And, it's, and, and, I, and I love it that you're teaching us a traditional method because that's really what you're doing. But, but if you didn't want the, the saturated fat and the cholesterol, if your doctor tells you to be on a low cholesterol diet, then you could use uh, a, uh, uh, a pork loin. Uh, you know, you... Pork loin is as lean as chicken, has a lot of flavor, and so you could also use that with the chicken in this dish. Right, right. Okay, so let's start the veggies. So you're going to start with the uh, onion, celery, and bell pepper? Yes. And, yes. And, and traditionally in Louisiana, we would refer to that as the Holy Trinity. Do you know what the Holy Trinity is? Yeah, it's uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, it is that. That's right. He said that as a good Dutch boy, didn't he? But in Louisiana, of course, it is these three vegetables that you're going to saute together. Onion, pepper, and celery, correct? Yeah. 
Now, yeah. the, uh, the ratio is that I always have about a 4 to 2 on the celery for okay. the onion. Okay. So 4 to 2. 4 to 2. Yeah, four onions and then uh, maybe eight celery sticks, sticks, but for the small size, we just kind of... Yeah, you're going to use yeah, a small, yeah, amount. small amount. Yeah. Um, the bell peppers, you've got to be a little careful with me with this, in my opinion. They, okay. they can cause bitterness. Okay, so, so you don't want to use too much of Not bell too pepper. much. Okay. And so now, now I put them on the grill first. Uh, okay. And then cut them up to make sure I don't get that bitterness in my... Okay, so that's why your recipe calls for these to be grilled. Yeah, um, if, if you go with too much bell pepper, yeah. it, it has a little bit of a bitterness in the, in okay. the, in the gumbo. Okay. I'm going to add some, uh, some uh, chicken stock. Okay, all right. Now, as you're adding that stock, I wanted to make a note that this chicken has started to kind of cook apart. And you made an interesting comment earlier when you were saying that some people recommend using an old hen. Yeah, an older, an older chicken. Yeah. So the meat will stay up a little bit more. It'll hold together more. Yeah. Maybe it's a little tougher. A right. stewing chicken, for right. example. Right, right. So you've added a little bit of broth, then what? I'm gonna add the other veggies. Okay, so other veggies. I'm gonna leave a little bit for garnish later. Yeah. And what's this one, parsley? Parsley. Okay, using fresh parsley, good fresh ingredients. I wanted to tell you that if you didn't want to, you, you prepared this stock with this chicken. You just made your own chicken stock, which yeah. is the good way to do it. Uh, but if you don't want to take that much time, then you buy a, a pre-made broth. Just make sure you choose the low sodium. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a dietitian. You want, if you're going to cook with this to make a, use this as a soup base, if it's not low sodium, it's just going to be too salty. And you want to be in control of the saltiness, yes? You can certainly cover up the whole dish with salt and then all the other stuff we put in there. Yeah. That's going to be gone. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the things that we've learned on Memorial Cooking Innovations. A little bit of salt brings out those flavors. The other ones, yeah. 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 But too much salt covers them up. Wow, I can see why that was one of your favorite shows. Tell us about another one. Okay, another one. Um, well, another fun show was when we went to the Mediterranean. Well, actually, we went to a restaurant in Nacogdoches, a Mediterranean restaurant. But Mr. Avo Dermacartajan showed us how to make his mother's tabbouleh. Oh, so a family recipe. Yeah. And, you know, another thing we learned on this show was that uh, foods taken from the Mediterranean diet are real tasty, but they're also real healthy, as you know. Exactly. And for those who don't know what tabbouleh is, this would probably be a great segment. Yeah, it would be. What is a secret tip about making a good tabbouleh? Well, the finest the finest leaves, the better it tastes. So in other words, you want your, you want a real fine chop on. So show us how to do that. Absolutely. I want, I'm chopping it as fine as I can. I see, okay. For see, taste. I, I've, never, I've never chopped parsley like this. Now, I'm noticing that you're wearing a glove, a special glove, and tell me why you're doing that. Always, we always wear a, a safety mesh glove okay. to protect our little fingers okay, that's from smart. a sharp knife. And I could get a glove like this, you know, for viewers at home who are learning how to use their knife, I could get a glove like this at a, uh, uh, a food, a food uh, I guess, a food supply store. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. They are available and they're uh, NSF uh, rated. And also, uh, if you if you ever were playing around a shark tank, you could use that glove for that too. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I, you know, whenever I've made tabbouleh in the past, I've never known how to get it this fine. So I'm glad you're showing us how to do this. That's beautiful. And I'd like to go over it one more time, okay. just okay. to make sure that we are as fun as we can get it. The smell from this parsley, it's a good fresh ingredient. And you know, a lot of people don't know that parsley is an extremely nutrient dense food. You know, a lot of Americans in American cuisine, they relegate parsley to just a nice garnish on the plate. What yeah. a shame that we don't eat parsley more often, huh? Tastes great. It's one of the, one of the values of the Mediterranean diet. Okay, so, what are the other ingredients you have here? Well, here, Tim, we have some fresh chopped tomatoes, yep. uh, fresh lemons, yep. green onions, yep. 
uh, bulgur, which is cracked wheat. Okay, so bulgur or uh, quack, cracked wheat, you'd find this labeled either way in the store. Correct. And earlier you were telling me this is a number one bulgur. Now tell me what that means. Well, the number one is the finest. Okay, so it's a finer grain. Correct. A number two would be? Would be a little slightly bigger and uh, typically use it for couscous. Okay, uh, so, the, so the number two bulgur I buy for couscous, number one I should buy for Tabbouleh. See, I think I've been using the wrong bulgur in my home recipe, so I'm glad you told me that. Okay, and what, what else do you have? Here we have some extra virgin olive oil yep. and some salt, and I skipped uh, uh, mint. fresh, yes, mint. dried mint. So you do put mint in your tabbouleh? Yeah, I do. Because I've been told by some people, well, I don't like mint in my tabbouleh. But, well, Tita but said so. Okay, then it must be right. Yes. Okay, so put this together for me. Show, me, what, show me how to okay, do Okay, here's already a bunch pre-chopped. Yeah. So we... I'm, I'm going to put this together right here. Yeah. Here's our, it's my first bunch of parsley. I was telling Ashley that one of the reasons I love to eat here is because of the fresh ingredients. And, you know, healthy eating is really about eating fresh food. Absolutely. You know? Okay, and so we'll next put the, the tomato. Yeah, we'll put more. Tomatoes on top of that. And you know, right now in my garden, I have, uh, they're just about to finish up, but I've, I've had a wonderful garden of tomatoes this year. It makes a great tabbouleh. Absolutely. It's homegrown tomatoes. And we'll top off with lemon juice. Okay. Alrighty. And you know, some, some people like juice. to take a shortcut with lemon juice and use the jar stuff. It just doesn't work. It has to be fresh lemons. Absolutely, it makes, it makes the whole difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we're just going to take a little pinch okay. of that mint on top. You don't want to put too much of that. Yeah. It's very powerful. Yes. And you know, one of the things that we've taught our viewers on Memorial Cooking Innovations is that dried herbs are two to three times more potent than fresh. Because if you suck all the water out of them, they're more concentrated. I agree. And so, so... You're you're uh, you're reinforcing something we've learned on I the agree. innovations. Get your bulgur in there. Get yeah. the bulgur in there. Okay. And our olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Flavor is in the freshness. I'm gonna top it off with some salt. A little bit of salt. And it, you know, the salt is always to taste, so. Yep, yep, okay, okay. And we're this gonna gently, we were, we're gonna gently toss this all together. And you wanna let it sit for about 30 minutes before you serve it. Okay. So all okay. the flavors and um, the tomato juice would actually. They blend, the flavors exactly. blend. Exactly. Okay, good, good. That is beautiful, that is a beautiful dish. Now that was a cool show. I know one of my favorites was back in June when you had Claude and Jones with the um, County Extension Service on talking about how to incorporate superfoods into our diet. Mm -hmm. um, she made some really flavorful recipes using blueberries yes. and also we had a good lesson on sodium as well. That was a good show, that's right, I remember that. Tim, we're going to get started by adding our blue cheese okay. to our bowl here. Right. And this is about a half a cup to a cup. Now, it okay. all depends on how much blue cheese you like. So if you like blue cheese, half Add a, a cup or a cup. If you like blue cheese, a cup. If you don't like blue yeah. cheese, back it off to about a half a cup. Now, you know, as a dietitian, I have to say the more blue cheese <laughs> we add, the more sodium we add. Yes. It's a very flavorful yes. ingredient. Yes. But if I'm limiting mm -hmm. my sodium, mm -hmm. I want to get close to that half cup. Exactly, huh? okay. exactly. And you can okay. substitute this out. You can substitute okay. it out for a fettuccine cheese or goat cheese or whatever cheese you want to add to it. That's, a, that's I just like blue cheese. Well and see that's a good note because feta is also a very flavorful mm -hmm. cheese. Mm -hmm. okay. It is very flavorful. And then we're going to add pecans. About okay. a half a cup to a cup. Okay. I like pecans and so the dietitian and you is going to tell me oh. what. Back well, off of the pecans. Well no, no actually <laughs> nuts are one of those superfoods. Uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. yes. and so the only thing we have to watch out for on nuts is they're a real nutrient dense food, mm -hmm. but they're also mm -hmm. very high calorie because yes. they have a lot of yes, oils. Yes, in yes, them. yes, yes. They're a really good source so, of protein. And again, you can change these out to um, uh, walnuts or, mm -hmm. or whatever nuts you want to change mm -hmm. it out to. So okay. that's that's totally up to you. 
And then we're going to add, Tim, about a cup okay. of coleslaw dressing. Okay. Now, you can make this from scratch from home if you want to, but okay. this is, again, the whole purpose of this is a very simple, fast, let's get this ready mm -hmm. and go have a picnic. It's a summer okay. day. We don't want to yeah. be inside. Perfect. So, so, so this would be an appropriate place to use a convenience food. Yes, it would Now, be. if you were having a nice dinner and you had, let's say, six or eight dinner guests coming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that might be a time to make your your coleslaw dressing. Exactly. You've got time. Exactly. Okay, you do. You're prepping you do. for the meal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're going to be, uh, one thing I do want to remind everybody is to be mindful of the uh, amount of coleslaw dressing that you add. When it says a cup, I don't add any more, any less. Okay. Now the pecans and the blue cheese, all that's kind of mm -hmm. by taste. Yes. But this, back off of it at first and then you can kind of gauge it later on. And there's a little bit of art coming out in, in what you're talking mm -hmm. about. You know, mm -hmm. cooking is both a science and an art. It is. It and is. there are some things, there are a few basics that uh, you, you don't want to vary from. Exactly. But if you don't mm -hmm. know that, like if I'm just learning mm -hmm. to cook, mm -hmm. just go by what the recipe says. Exactly. And go then, by the recipe. Then you can vary it. Exactly. Once you, you once you kind of figure out what you like and mm -hmm. what you don't like, you know, this is one of my, my preacher's wife absolutely loves this recipe. Anytime I go anywhere, I have to bring this recipe. Well, and what I like about uh, the way you're doing this, mm -hmm. Claudine, mm -hmm. is you're you're, you're giving us some tips like you right. were talking about. On right. this one, you, mm -hmm. you only use the cup of dressing. Exactly. So that's a good tip. Exactly. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss in my coleslaw. Now, I bought this that's already made up. Okay. Again, convenience Convenient sake. Item. If you yep. had time and you were going to prep your food a day ahead of time, mm -hmm. then by all means, do your own cabbage mix. And, and you know this convenience mm -hmm. item yes. doesn't have any more sodium in it than any other than if it was fresh. So okay. this is an example of a convenience item that doesn't add uh, extra sodium or fat or right. things like that. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Some convenience foods are good, right? Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. Now, you know what I like about this recipe? What, Tim? Well, this, this recipe, all in one dish, is a good example of texture, mm -hmm. flavor, mm -hmm color. I mean, you know, yes. you've, you've got yes. the, you've got the, the uh, blue and red the, and orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you've got these really uh, uh, intense flavors yes. with the blue the cheese. Blue cheese. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, this is just a incredibly uh, nutritious recipe, but it's also, it's a, it's a real delicious recipe. It is a very delicious recipe. And, you know, this recipe right here, it's got all of your food groups that represented. You've got meat, you've got dairy, you've got fruit, you've got vegetables. So this is a really a, a, a superfood of salad. Well, you know, uh, it's interesting that, that you would say that mm -hmm. because, you know, as a dietitian, we gauge balance, right. meal balance or balance in a dish by food groups. And, and the reason we do that is because foods in different groups have clusters of different nutrients. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. other words, one batch of nutrients is in dairy that's not in meat or vegetable and right. vice versa. And so when you mix foods from different groups, you improve the balance of the dish. Exactly. Now, you know what I like about what you just taught our viewers right there? What, Tim? Well, you identified, uh, of course, you know this, but a lot of people don't. You mentioned that this dish ha has a member of the meat group in it, okay. which is? Mm -hmm. The pecans. Yeah, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. Nuts and seeds, some people don't realize, uh -huh. are, are a meat meat group. Exactly. And, exactly. you know, from a nutrition perspective, you know, some people think they're adding nuts just to make it a mm -hmm. crunchy, delicious mm -hmm. meal. But, but uh, from, you know, nuts from the meat group, they're a little bit healthier in some ways than meats because they don't have cholesterol or saturated exactly. fat. Exactly, exactly, and, so. and among other things. And yeah. so what I've done now, Tim, is um, I tossed the coleslaw in the dressing. Okay, so you and got so, everything coated. Exactly, I've yes. got everything coated because I want to be very careful when I add my fruits. I don't want to mash them down. You know, fruits are very soft and delicate, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I've added about a cup of uh, mandarin oranges that I've already drained. Okay. Uh, I purchased the light mandarin oranges. Oh, I thought okay. you'd be proud of me. I am, I'm so very, very proud good, thank you. <laughs> and so I added a cup of blueberries, and then I have also um, sliced a cup of grapes. Now, I like to add more grapes, okay. so this okay. is a good a good heaping, yes. healthy portion of okay. a cup, if you good. will. Good. And about a quart of strawberries that I have already sliced up as well. And so what I did with the strawberries is I just took um, a whole strawberry mm -hmm. and cut it 
cut it in half and just cubed it up real good. Okay. So okay. that's what I did with the strawberries, but I wanted to show the viewers that so that they could kind of tell mm -hmm. about the size of the strawberries that I, I like. Gotcha. Now, if you like it chunkier, mm -hmm. by all means, chunk it up. It, that's kind of... Well, but you know what, what I like about the way you're doing this is you're making all of these ingredients mm -hmm. about the same size. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. slice those grapes in half, you cut the strawberries yes. the same size, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and, and that's, that's, a, that's actually a very nice culinary uh, tactic, you might say. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Leanne, in March, we learned that soups are not only healthy and delicious, but they're very economical to serve. In this show, we put a, a canned soup and Chef Mike Hodgkin's homemade soup in the ring together. Let's see who got knocked out. Well, Chef Mike, a lot of people don't cook because they either don't want to take the time yeah. or they just don't know where to start in learning to cook. Right. Well, soup is a good place to start because it's very forgiving. You basically add the flavors you like. There's no chemical balances to worry about. And it's just so forgiving. So it's not like making a, a souffle, for example. Right. Where you Any have to kind work. of baking, we have to worry about chemical balances. Yeah, yeah. The one, the one, experiment, one thing you have to remember is to write down what you do so you remember to make it again. Make it the next time. Right. Yes. In fact, the, the last soup I made for Kathy, uh, she liked it so much that I did that very thing. I yep. wrote down, okay, well, so I can remember right. to do this again. Yeah. So, so what we have in front of us is the ingredients if we were going to make a... Uh, vegetable beef soup right. from scratch mm -hmm. and we want to compare that to uh, a ready to serve uh, heat and serve can of soup right vegetable beef soup okay so Mike if you're uh, if you were calculating the cost per serving of your homemade soup what mm -hmm. would you estimate the cost to be uh, let me see, that'd be about six serving. I'd say 18 cents, 15 to 18 cents okay. a serving. Okay, 15, 18 cents. We'll just right. say 18 cents per okay. serving. Well, this, this uh, convenience item mm -hmm. costs 84 cents per serving. Mm -hmm. So clearly we have to give round one to the homemade soup. Right. And wins right. by a pretty good margin. Right. 18 yeah. to 84 cents. Okay. Yeah, well, you're paying someone else to do all the work. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. When I could do this in my kitchen. Very easily. Okay, so round one goes to the homemade soup. Now round two, Mike, how many minutes, how long would it take you to prepare a homemade vegetable beef soup? Oh, it's pretty simple. I'd say 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Yeah. Well, this is an easy one. I mean, all mm -hmm. I have to do is pour this in a pot and heat it up. Right. You know, it may take five minutes, maybe 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so we clearly have to give round two to the convenience item. Right. But there is one other factor consi to consider in that. Yes, it is, yeah. Like, what would that be? Well, the amount of what you make here, it wouldn't matter if you're making one serving or ten servings, it takes the same amount of time. Yeah. So you can make more servings and then freeze it for later. Yeah. And then you'd have your convenience food made by yourself. Okay, and so, so if, if I get more than one meal out of this, then I take the minutes it took me to make it, 30 yeah. minutes, divided by the number of meals. If I get two, that's 15 minutes. Right. Well, I'm at five or 10 here. And so there's not much difference. It really isn't, because I'm cooking ahead. Yeah, you're just thinking ahead. Right? So we're going to be fair in this. We're going to give round two to the convenience item. Right. But there is a caveat there. Yeah. yeah, it's not by a wide margin. Okay, so, so Chef Mike, in, in a homemade soup or a canned soup, which one would you say has more flavor? Oh, no question. Your homemade soup would, because you're making it to your own likes, so you can take out ingredients, put in ingredients, or uh, raise the amount of the ingredients that you like. So you're making it to your taste. That's a standard recipe. That's it is what it is. So if I like more garlic, for example, it's mm -hmm. nothing to add more garlic right. to my soup. Or like right. you said earlier, I can mix and match different ingredients. Right. It, whereas this, it, it just is what it is. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So we're going to give round three to the homemade soup, and mm -hmm. that's not surprising. Really. Right. Okay. Right. Nobody's big surprise on that. All right. Now. Now comes the last and final round, and of course this is my favorite yeah. round, and you know what round that is. It is nutritional. Uh, nutrition, yes. As a registered dietitian, I right. have to be interested right. in nutrition. So in this round, 
Uh, I did nutritional analysis on the homemade soup, and of course it's provided on the fax box in our canned soup. So uh, on the uh, homemade soup, it's not surprising. Actually, in the two soups, the calories are roughly equivalent. Okay. But you first start seeing differences in the amount of fat. Mm -hmm. There's more fat in the canned soup than there is in the homemade soup. And you know, that's likely to be because we can use lean meats in a homemade soup right. that, that you don't have that option in a can. Right. Uh, the real difference that comes out and it just uh, blares is the amount of sodium. Mm -hmm. In the canned soup, there's 890 milligrams of sodium. In the homemade soup, there's just 85. Right, it's about 10 times the difference. 10 times, Ten times. more sodium in the canned soup. Right. And then another, another difference that's not that uh, explicit, but it is a difference, is the amount of fiber in the soup. In the homemade soup, there's 10 grams of fiber. In the canned soup, there's uh, three grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. Now why is it that the homemade has more fiber than the canned? Well, you're getting most of your flavor from the actual vegetables rather than the onion powder, garlic powder, yeah. all the little seasonings. So, yeah. So that'd make a big difference. So, yeah. so with those fresh ingredients, you're getting not only flavor, but more, more, more fiber. More fiber. And, and uh, one thing too, that uh, we, you mentioned the high fat content, the one benefit of making it for yourself, a very good benefit to make it yourself, is using something like olive oil, which is very beneficial, Helpful, versus fat. we have no idea where that fat came from, and it's probably natural. Yeah, it could be like beef tallow, <laughs> beef for tallow, example. Yes. So, so beef tallow clogging my blood, blood vessels, or mm -hmm. olive oil uh, helping to clear them out. Right, then okay. that'd be a big difference. So, so we have to say the clear winner on this is the homemade uh, vegetable beef soup. In summary, the clear winner here is the homemade soup for three out of the four rounds that we check. And so it's just like we always say here on Memorial Cooking Innovations. The flavor's in the freshness. The flavor is in the freshness. Okay, now Tim, that was like watching Rocky Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a really good review of the past year's shows. If you missed any of these shows, um, you can check our website at CHI St. Luke's Memorial and click on Memorial Cooking Innovations. There you'll find all of our past episodes as well as current ones and you can also download the recipes. Yeah, and keep watching because Leanne is going to continue showing us how to enjoy fun and flavorful foods. Leanne, I want to say thank you for having me back and you are going to love doing Memorial Cooking Innovations. Well, thank you, Tim. Yes, I'm looking forward to continuing the journey of exploring foods and flavors. And as you know, here on Memorial Cooking Innovations, we're changing the world one, one bite, bite at, at a time. time. Memorial Cooking Innovations is made possible through the generous efforts of CHI St. Luke's Memorial, the Polk Education Center, Sodexo Food Service, and the City of Lufkin, KLTX Channel 15.